viewers welcome to my channel pharmacypedia this is dr shikha chohan and in this session we are going to learn about the right to information act 2005 if you have not subscribed to my channel pharmacypedia please do like share and subscribe to my channel pharmacypedia for getting further updates and informations related to pharmacy so this act right to information act was passed in the year 2007 it was enacted on 15 june 2005 and commenced from 12th october 2005 recently in the july 2019 amendment to, to this act has also been passed i will share what are the different aspects perspectives of the right to information act 2005 and what changes have taken place in the amendment act 2019 now right to information act my dear students we as the citizen of india are empowered with this right to information act previously in in the in previous times people have suffered a lot in the government institutions whenever you went for any sort of the working people were like harassed for not providing the information by the government officials so this problem over the period of time was raised and concerned was about the working for the people who could not get their work done from the government officials and the government officials uh, by the virtue of their positions did not provide sufficient information did not proceed the case so it was decided and realized by the government that there should be an act which should provide and empower the poor people the genuine people who wanted to have the information from the government officials so it through this act of the parliament of india it provided the settings for for carrying out the practical regime of the right to information for the indian citizens and under the provision of this act any citizen of india may request the information from a public authority from the central government office from the state government office which is required to reply immediately or within a period of 30 days so whenever you seek to information from any of the government organization of or any of the state or state government and the person is not cooperating with you you can seek and you can file the right uh, right to information through online or through offline and you can seek the information and whereabouts of all your uh, queries within time frame of 30 days now this is again very important the time frame is very important the as per the act pia public public issuance officer is there so a dedicated person pia is there who will look after the queries who will solve and provide all the questions related to the rti and will respond immediately or within a time frame of 30 days now my dear students very important thing to uh, to know about here is that if the information is not being provided within a time frame of 30 days the pa has to give the penalty in the form of for the delay of providing information now this delay will be costing him 250 rupees per day now it becomes a time frame whereby he has to respond to the query he has to solve the grievance and this through this uh, act the indian people were empowered so the act requires every public authority to computerize their records for wide dissemination so they all the information should be on the computer all the related data information so the whole system has to be computerized and to proactively certain categories of the information so that the citizens need minimum recourse to request for information formally now most of the time all the central government offices are taking the rti query online there is a website rti website you can visit and you can post your query online you just have to create a profile and then you can post your query online and they will have to respond within 30 days now what was the purpose of establishing this act so this act hold together empowered the poor people they empowered and provided a legal framework to the citizen of india under their democratic right to access the information under the control of the public authorities previously over the span of the time what happened was that people were not given other desired information whenever they visited any central government office or state government office the 
authorities did not provide the relevant information they did not pro provide the whereabouts and uh, what happened was the case was piling up and since the decisions were not taken out the people were not aware they were being exploited so to remove these facts so to promote the transparency and the accountability in the functioning of every, every public authority the act was framed out so ultimately the objective was to have a legal framework whereby the people of india can post the queries to the government officials and even ask with a whereabout of the problems now who is the public authority so public authority here in the act refers to means any authority or any body or any institution which is established or constituted by or under the constitution or by any other law made by the parliament so any government office any uh, public authority refers to the people working uh, and the organization established by the parliament or by any other law made by the state legislature so all the central government organizations all the state government organization falls into the category of public authorities so by the notifications which are issued or ordered made by the appropriate government includes body owned or controlled or substantially financed by the government or non government organizations substantially financed or partially financed by directly or indirectly by the funds provided by the appropriate government so in this will count even the ngos which are being aided by the government so what does the information mean now we should, we are aware what are the public authorities next we should know what type of the information we require and which can help so information falling into any of these categories maybe the records or the documents any sort of the documents you want to know memos or opinions and advices press releases circulars orders log books contracts reports papers samples models data materials in any of the electronic form so you can get all these informations from the government officials from at the st central government state government simply you have to file one rti either in the online form or in the offline mode for all the central government the mode is now online mostly online and for the state governments it is an offline mode whereby you have to put up a simple application to the pio now what is the need for this rdi act because this rdi act is the power of poor people those who don't have any sort of the help and they need to get their work done from the government officials at time it was becoming a nightmare so the act came into force and believe my dear students it was one of the most powerful tool utilized by the indian citizens to have the transparency to have the accountability in the working of every, every public authority it reduced the corruption because the pio has to respond to the query through the rti within 30 days if us he was not able to answer the query within the time frame of 30 days he was penalized it also prevented the administrative arbitrariness the rudeness it bridged the gap between the providers and the recipient of public services it made the indian citizen part of the decision making process it made administrative responsive and strengthened the foundations of the de democracy so we having the democratic government were more empowered to get the informations in whatever way which was desired and which was your own decisions to take the decisions further you need to have the informations so now this what was the coverage of this rti act which came into effect on 12th october 2005 my dear students you should always remember the dates when it is about the acts you should know when on which day it came into effect so for the rti it was 12th october 2005 so it covered all the central state and the local governments and all the bodies owned government or controlled financed by the governments non government organizations substantially financed means partially financed directly or indirectly by the funds provided by the appropriate government even the executive judiciary and the legislative includes information relating to private bodies which can be accessed by under any other laws for the time being in force 
Now, uh, when we were talking information, we need to drive from the central government, state government. Some of the organizations were provided exemption. The reason being because uh, all since all of the organizations cannot be covered in the act due to the due to the security issues, due to national integrity issues. So the info, uh, so the organization falling into the categories of like sovereignty and integrity of India, whereby security is most concerned, and it was exemptions were provided to certain organizations organization for example the courts breach of privilege of the parliaments trade secrets intellectual property fiduciary relationships so certain organization which received fundings from the foreign governments life and physical safety of any person or the issues under the investigation cabinet papers invasion in privacy so some of the organizations have been prevented have been given the exemptions to be waived off from the rti queries Apart from that, some of the organization for investigation bureaus or DRIs, Narcotic Control Bureau, Aviation Research Centers, BSF, CRPF, ITBP, CISF, NSG, Assam Rifles, Special Service Bureaus, Special Branches of Andaman and Nicobar, the Crime Branch Dadra and Nagar Haveli, Special Branch Lakshdi Polish. So wherever any organization must have the information which is related to the security and integrity and sovereignty of the, of the country, that organization is provided the exemptions from the RTI queries. Now let us try to understand what is the process of processing the RTI. For that, there are two modes, online mode and offline mode. Most of the central government organizations nowadays have the RTI queries, which can be posted on their websites or through the RTI website, rti.gov.in, whereby you can have your profile created and then you can log in the question. While processing for the question, you have to keep in the mind that it, the question should be simple. It should be in a, uh, sh it should be precise. It should not be too long the reason being since the time it is time frame limited if you post a very long query in a single application it may not get processed so to get it processed if you we can bifurcate it and divide it into sections into two or three parts so that each single query can be answered easily then there are certain other things you have to keep in the mind that the questions are should be in the simple format to get it processed for fast so you it is along with the fees so you have for the offline mode where for example in the case of the state governments you have to apply in writing or through the electronic media means in english or hindi in the official language of the area to the public information officer pio so specifying the particulars of the information sought for apart from that the reason for seeking the inform why do you require this information then sometimes you may mention it and but it is not mandatory it you, and it the application has to be accompanied by the fees the fees is very nominal it is rupees 10 so the information which is required in the electronic uh, media or floppy or CD, additional charges will be applications. For the photocopy, again, you have to give extra charges of rupees two per page. So the filing of RTI is very simple, either through online mode or through the offline mode. Very a simple application form along with the fees of rupees 10 uh, can be submitted. Now, what is the, the processing expenses incurred by the public information PIO to be intimated in writing? So, applicants can seek the review of the decision on the fees charged by the PIO by applying to the appropriate appellate authorities. No, no fees from the people living below the poverty line. So, from the people below poverty, they are not, they don't have to give any fees for the writing RTI. Free of cost if the PIO fails to comply within the time limit as prescribed in the RTI Act. So, RTI Act simply says that the PIO has to respond to the query immediately or within the time frame of 30 days if he don't respond he has to be penalized now this time limit of 30 days is very important 35 days in case it is filed with the assistant pio so 48 hours in case the matter to which the information pertains affects the life and liberty of an individual so it has to be very quick so this act actually empowers the people of india the citizens of india whereby they, they can get their queries immediately solved by the public information officers appointed under the RTI Act through the central government, through in the st uh, state governments immediately also. Now it was the appeal. You can put, if your query is not being answered timely, you can put up the appeal. So the first appeal is with the senior in the department. So if where you, for example, if in the forest department, you have placed the appeal. The first appeal is within the senior of, of where the PIO is working 
in that department if it is not resolved then the second appeal is with the information commissioners so like we have election commissioners similarly we have informational commissioners associated with the information act now what are the penalties for the refusal of the applications providing malafide or false information or destruction of the information the penalty levied under the rta act is 250 rupees per day up to a maximum of 25000 which is recovered from the salary of the officials so my dear students you can understand the significance of the act how this act is important whereby it has reduced a lot of corruptions because when the pio has to be penalized he is where he has to work he has to solve he has to resolve the query at any point and moreover the departmental action also takes place if the query is not resolved or if the information is false or any sort of the malafide information the person will be penalized yes departmental action can no civil action no criminal liability is there but that again is a lot for the person departmental action takes place so my dear students this was one of the most powerful act tool provided to the people of india citizens of india by the parliament in the year 2005 and it empowered the people there is a, this app, putting up an application to rti is very simple my dear students you can see the rti login website rti.gov.in where you can get the detailed information you just have to create the profile and you can place any sort of the rti with the, the organization central government organizations or you can even have a hard copy to the state government officials whereby they have to respond to your query and this is this act was actually able to solve a lot of scams lot of scams which for example commonwealth games scam and many other schemes scams came into lime like once this act was passed out so it became challenge for even the government to keep up the pace with the act they have to review it and therefore in the again in the year 2019 july 2019 a proposal was passed out it to the amendment to the act because this law act was very powerful and um, due to this act lot of the scams were exposed so again an amendment whereby this uh, i will share the amendment in my further videos also like uh, information commission terms were dictated by the central government previously there were certain changes like for example the information term was fixed 5 years but later on the amendment helped the central government may decide the salary central government may decide the term of the information commissioner so uh, the act power was reduced due to this amendment thank you so much for watching the video please do like share and subscribe to my channel pharmacypedia for getting further updates thank you so much